Welcome back to this series of videos on using Git for version controlling your projects. Um, so we are now ready to start using Git for version controlling. So the first task um, here is to create something called as a repository. Now this is a particular terminology used in the world of Git to denote a project that is being version controlled. So whenever we say a repository, we mean something, a project which is being version controlled. And this video is based on lesson three of the software carpentry Git Novice uh, classes. Uh, I think I have some problem with my internet connection. Let me see if I can connect to the Imperial network. I should be able to um, do that. Yes, now it's connected and now if I refresh this page, you can see that uh, how we're going to do this, okay? So we're going to have a little bit of a story around uh, this class. The, the story is about two fictitious humans uh, who are investigating uh, if we can send a planetary lander to Mars, okay? So the two fictitious humans are Wolfman and Dracula. Yeah, it's a little bit funny, I know, but uh, that's the theme that we'll go with, okay? That's what the software carpentry uh, material is based on. So let's uh, let's go with that. So Wolfman and Dracula, they are the two people, um, fictitious people, clearly, and they want to land um, a planetary mission to Mars, okay? So we're going to work in desktop, okay? So I'm now going to show some live demonstration of this, um, the tasks involved and how to set up a repository. We're not yet going to do version controlling. We're not going to see different versions of the project, but we are going to initiate a Git repository here. Um, when I say a repository, I mean a project that is being version controlled. Okay, so let's start. So right now I'm in my home directory and I can see that by using print working directory and it says I'm in my H drive. Uh, Imperial's H drive is mounted, um, which means I'm in my home directory. The first thing I need to do is to go back to, uh, to go to my desktop. And you can do that by changing directory to users. Um, no, it's to, I think in Imperial machines, in Imperial owned machines, you, you have to go to C drive, users, you can use tab completion for helping you to change to the correct path. So we're going to be in desktop and print working directory should confirm that I'm in my desktop right now. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to now uh, work on this folder called planets. Okay. And that is not just a simple folder. It is in fact going to be my start of my project. It's going to be my root of my project. So my entire project on this Mars landing mission is going to be uh, based in this root folder called planets. So planets is the home from which all the other uh, the planets folder is the home from which all the other um, sub files and folders are going to originate from. So this is the base of our project. So it's very important to identify such a base for your home, for your project. If you're working on a C++ project, identify the folder where all the subfolders and files of your C++ files or your source code and your header files are going to reside. If you're working on a LaTeX project, identify a specific suitable folder which you can designate as the home for that project. So every project will have like a home folder, like a base folder. So I'm going to create that base folder here and I'm going to just call it planets. So you've learned the make build commands in the shell lesson. So I'm going to use that. So it's a little bit of a good practice for um, those of you listening uh, to this video. So make build planets. So I now if I minimize my shell window, if I minimize all my windows and go back to my windows desktop i should see planets there it is right so that's a folder so it's just to reassure ourselves that we are in the right folder um, unix and mac os uh, people have a different way of navigating to there uh, it's definitely not c users i think it's probably something like tilde slash desktop probably but uh, that's for mac and linux uh, folks Okay, so now we are um, we created the planets folder. Now we need to navigate to it. So I'm going to cd planets, pd into planets directory. So right now, 
my working directory is planets that's where that is what i've decided to designate as my home of the repository or that's what i'm going to call as the root of the repository okay so the first command that we're going to learn is to initiate a repository initiate a git repository so basically instruct git to start tracking all the changes from this point onwards or basically instruct git tell git that this is my root of the repository the command to do that just like every other git command is git followed by the action that we want to take the specific action that i want to take here is to initiate a repository and the command for that is git init so git init will create a repository at this place so it will say initialize empty git repository that's just because we clearly have nothing else here no files were there we just created this folder we just we don't have any other files there so it's an empty repository so from this point down below this project so if i put anything in planets that can now be tracked if i put a subfolder of files those can now be tracked using git we haven't yet explained how to track them that will be coming in the future videos but this is how you will get started uh, this is how you should get started by um, the git version control system now you've learned the ls command it's for listing files in the folder so if i type ls basically see nothing so does that mean that there's nothing done in that folder we just initialized the repository so something should have happened right so just using ls won't help because ls by default doesn't list all the hidden directories but if i pass the dash a flag to show all the directories including all the directories and files and folders including the hidden files and folders if i pass the dash a flag aha uh -huh, then you see something called as a dot git folder this is a folder that appears in your directory now i'm going to minimize my uh, minimize all my windows to go to reveal my desktop now if i double click on the planets again based on the basic windows settings i don't have this uh, based on the default windows settings i don't see any any folder here but if i go to view options and if i go to again view here and if i say show hidden files folders and drives and i click ok then you can see the corresponding dot git uh, directory so these are the same places so it confirms that there is something being created so git has initialized um, this directory as the root of a repository and it has used a subfolder called dot git so dot it is a hidden folder so anything that starts with the dot is by default designated as hidden and you have to explicitly show it using the dash a flag or go to your operating systems graphical menu and instruct it to reveal itself okay so that is where git begins tracking so this dot folder contains a ton of information it contains a lot of information so if i ask for all the hidden files in this subfolder if i have navigated now to the dot git folder you can see there is a lot of information so all the project related information including the versions the differences between versions and all other information that pertains to these different aspects of our project will be saved in these directories now it's very important not to mess with this directory that's why by default windows detects or git bash in fact detects that this is a git directory and warns you with an exclamation mark this is like a default configuration in git bash your terminal if you are using linux or mac os may not be set uh, to this prompt but be aware that you are in the git folder okay so you are in the dot git folder and this is where git stores all the version control information okay now let's go a step back so git cd dot dot will move you back to the planet folder okay now if the next command we are now ready to know uh, learn our next command and that is just like any other git command is git followed by the command name and here the command name i'm interested in is status so give me the status of the current repository like tell me what you are up to git okay and it says oh i am now on branch master no commits have been made yet and nothing to commit basically it says that 
I'm on master branch and this is a separate concept which we will not cover in this video uh, or in this course in fact because this is a beginner's course meant for new people who are getting introduced to Git. Okay. So we are on master branch, but it can have many branches. You can have a development branch, you can have a collaborator one branch, you can have a collaborator two branch, and you can have a master branch. The default branch is the master branch. That's when you initiate a repository, that's the default branch you get. But you can uh, navigate to other branches. We will not, as I already said, we will not be covering branches in this course, okay? The next line of the status command result says, no commits yet. That means we have not done anything so commit is an, another terminology which will frequently come across in the world of okay? so a commit just means uh, that when you make something which is ready to be cut, that unique set of changes can be described by something known as a commit. When we get to commits, I will explain that in a little bit more detail. Okay? And the third line here just says nothing to commit. That means there's nothing that's been done. We have just initialized a Git repository. And it's created this .git folder and it's ready to track, but basically there's nothing more. That's what the git status says, okay? Now, um, okay, now we can be ready to track. I'm going to use control L this time to clear my screen. You can also use the clear command, clear your screen. Let's say I'm now interested in talking about moons. Now we are in the planets directory and now let's say we want to make, talk something about moons. Okay, so I'm now ready to make the moons directory, okay? I've now made a moons directory and now if you ls you can see that there is a moons directory present in this planets folder or planets directory okay now you can cd into moons now you can also git init here that's what the in initial tendency will be if you have to track something about moons but this is incorrect because there is no need of initializing another git repository within a git repository because everything that is available within the root repository will be tracked. So the moon's directory will be automatically tracked. So, uh, so any file within, uh, uh, let me correct myself, any file or um, subfolders which contain files will be tracked. Uh, so empty directories will not be tracked by Git. That's important to remember. But any files within moons can be tracked any other file within planets can also be tracked basically once you have designated let's go back to planets once you have designated planets as your root of the repository everything else that belongs to planets that belongs within planets like subfolders files uh, non-empty subfolders let me emphasize that again git doesn't track just empty subfolders but it tracks non-empty subfolders and individual files okay so if you have uh, non-empty files and for if you have non-empty subfolders or if you have files then those will be tracked and you don't have to necessarily initiate another git in it in fact i recommend against it is strongly recommended against initiating another git repository now, if you had accidentally done that, let's say you got moons because you're a beginner, you may have got trigger happy and you, you might have done git in it. Uh, now, this can conflict with the outermost repository. So, there is a git repository in planets. It will, in fact, try to track further the moons repository. Now, this is completely confusing. So, you shouldn't do that. You should have just one git repository. That will be the root of our project and it's in planets. So we got trigger happy and we have accidentally created another git repository here. Now, how do we get rid of uh, this kind of um, mistake? These are called git init mistakes. Okay, so this is typically done by newcomers to the field, and that's okay, that's fine as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, uh, but this is um, uh, strongly recommended again, so we have to get rid of this. So, how do we do that? Let's do ls a. I'll say that there is a git subfolder present here dot get subfolder so we have to get rid of all those that is how you do it so you do an rm command the unix rm command and you recursively delete all the subfolders within git so git the dot git uh, folder subfolder contains further subfolders and files so you have to remove everything else from this point onwards okay so rm minus rf rm dash rf dot git at this location, we don't get trigger happy again. Be very careful. You only want to get rid of the wrongly initiated re repository within the moons folder. Now, if you go to planets 
and give this command notice that i have not pressed the enter key so far then uh, if i go to planets and hit the uh, rm-rf.git it will basically get rid of all the version tracking that is a completely a dangerous thing to do right so do not do that make sure where you are currently and from that point you can issue this command so i strongly recommend against doing this i think in the first place you should not initiate git init anywhere other than the root of the repository so you should not have initiated the git init in the moon source directory but now that we have accidentally done it we make sure that we are actually in the moon's folder and get rid of it. so that's going to remove that now ls a will say okay there's nothing else here so it's empty so now we are back to the initial position i'm going to clear my screen and go back to the planets so this is our current situation we have a single dot git repository sitting in the plants folder and we have another folder called moons now this is okay now anything which you place within moons any files or non-empty folders will now be tracked by git and we will talk about how to track that in the next set of videos so to summarize git init will initiate a repository and all the version control information is stored in that .git folder. There should only be one .git folder that should be located at the root of the repository. So with that set up, we are now ready to actually do some exciting hands-on stuff of version tracking. And we will do that in the next set of videos. See you then. Bye.